Codex Chaos Space Marines is finally here and in this video I'm going to tell you if this codex was ruined before release. Stay tuned to find out more. Hey, wonderful people of YouTube, welcome to the channel. Uh, if this is the first time you've watched one of these types of review videos, we do these slightly differently to other channels here on YouTube. So instead of telling you the whole codex and reading it page for page, we're going to pick out some standout points, 15 points to be precise. We'll run through them in five groups of threes, and I'll give you my hot takes from Chaos Space Marines, Codex Chaos Space Marines. We've done this previously with the Aldari Codex and with the Tyranid Codex. I'm contemplating it doing it with Warzone Nephilim, but I'm not sure whether I care enough or not. But if you like this, please give it a like, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, share it with your friends, and tell more people about how we're doing these reviews. Why do we do it this way? Well, we do it this way so that we don't spoil that book for you. So when you get to tear the plastic off that brand new Chaos Space Marines Codex, you still have some kind of surprises. And trust me, this is a thick and meaty book. So after this review, when you do get your hands on a copy of Codex Chaos Space Marines, you will have lots of surprises inside to read through, lots of things to get excited about. So what do we cover? Well, we cover five main topics. I've tweaked two of the topics slightly just because I think it fits better for these style of reviews. We're going to cover the three biggest changes in Codex Chaos Space Marines, three biggest changes from typically last version of the same codex. We're going to cover three things that I like stroke love, three things I don't like and they're the two changes, three standout units and my three favourite stratagems and the last one's a tough pick and I'll explain why later in the video. If you really do love the work that we do here on the channel we do stream three times a week, two of those of which are games of 40k. If you do love it please think about becoming a channel member it's the best way to support the channel going forward um, and you get access to many perks which you can check out if you hit the join channel button below otherwise let's dive in to codex chaos space marines so we're going to start with the three biggest changes from the previous chaos space marines codex and the first one we're going to touch on is a new universal rule within the whole book called let the galaxy burn if your army's battle forged then typically all legion based units with the exception of cultists or Agents of Chaos, I believe it is, they gain the Let the Galaxy Burn ability. Now, Let the Galaxy Burn can be called something slightly different. It's basically Chaos Combat Doctrines, essentially, with a slight tweak. The first slight tweak is the fact that you get plus two to all flamer weapons, because we know how many millions and millions and millions of flamers Chaos Space Marine armies typically have. Mm. You do get plus two to your D6 for number of hits with flame weapons. I guess it's kind of important for Heldrake Bell Flamers and for things like Lord Discordance, but typically it's not going to make a massive different a difference to your Chaos Space Marine army. The big piece, however, is the Combat Doctrine's ability. So now, Chaos Space Marines who have the Let the Galaxy Burn ability will be in one of three types of doctrine, I guess. They'll either be in Wanton Destruction, Wanton Massacre, or or wanton slaughter. Now, they basically work exactly the same as Space Marine Combat Doctrines if you've used these before. So wanton destruction happens in the first battle round. Wanton massacre, I believe, is second and potentially third if you decide to stay in um, wanton massacre battle rounds. And then wanton slaughter is third or fourth battle round, depending on when you decide to switch. So you have to switch from destruction to massacre battle round one to two. You can choose to stay in massacre for an additional turn, and then you have to switch to slaughter in battle round four, or you can choose to switch straight to slaughter in battle round three. Does that make sense? Kind of fuzzy ish. Okay, cool. So what does these do? These aren't quite the same as Combat Doctrines. They don't give you an additional AP, which actually would be really nice nowadays considering Armour of Contempt is such a problem. Uh, what they do instead is they give you exploding sixes to hit depending on the weapon type and depending on what type of wanton you're in. So if you're in Destruction, it affects Grenade, Heavy Weapons, and it affects, I'm looking down right now, does it tell me? It does tell me, Rapid Fire. So six, a six to hit scores an additional hit. Wanton Massacre will then affect Rapid Fire, Assault and Pistol Weapons. So it's the sort of tactical doctrine, I guess. Wanton Slaughter affects Assault, Pistol or Melee Weapons. I think, I feel like it actually affects more than Combat Doctrines. But the big thing is, instead of gaining additional AP, you're getting Exploding Sixes. So a six to hit scores an additional hit. 
It's quite nice. It's like Death to the False Emperor in the previous Codex, but for range weapons, I quite like it. I'm not I'm not against it. Much like Space Marine Chapter Tactics, though, what I, or the Combat Doctrines, what I hate about it is if I was a Cornate player who wanted purely melee, I might not get any bonus from Wanton Destruction in Turn 1. I might want to be in Wanton Slaughter from Turn 3, and I kind of don't like that. There are ways in which you can manipulate it, but... It's a it's a nice addition, and that's the thing to remember. It's an addition to rules that we didn't previously have. So in that regards, it's a cool change. So the second biggest change, and possibly my favourite change in the whole codex, is Chaos Marks. And why it's a change? Well, Chaos Marks still exist, they've always existed, but this time they actually do something. Now, you do have to pay points. You have to pay 15 points per unit, or one power level, to give each unit a Chaos Mark but they give you benefits, they give you bonuses. And if you choose to take a Chaos Icon, they give you additional bonuses. So if, for example, I've got the book right in front of me, if your Mark of Corn, then each time a model in this unit makes a melee attack, if it made a charge move, was charged to perform the heroic intervention, add one to the strength characteristic of that attack. And if you have an Icon, improve the AP of melee weapons by one, which is quite nice. Mark of Nurgle, we'll get into this one in... Well, I'm going to cover this one again a little bit later on. But each time an attack is made against this unit, if the strength characteristic of that attack either equals or is at least double the deafness characteristic of this unit, subtract one from the wound roll. Icon does something extra. Mark of Zinch, the first time the unit takes damage, you can make it zero. Mark of Slanesh, you fights first. Again, the icons give you additional bonuses with AP or things like that. So the icon for Slanesh... If it makes a melee attack, add one to the hit roll, which is quite nice. Um, the icon for Nurgle, unmodified hit rolls of six automatically wound the target, which is quite nice. And icon for Zinch, improve AP of ranged attacks by one. So all the icons do things as well, but Chaos Marks actually do something. Rather than just giving you access to stratagems, they actually give that particular unit a boon of some sort. Big positive change. Definitely the right way to go to with Chaos Marks. The third biggest change in Codex Chaos Space Marines is Legions. Now, in in 8th edition, you needed about 345 different books just to run Chaos Space Marines of certain Legion flavours. We had supplements that had extra stratagems and warlord traits for Black Legion and Emperor's Children and Red Corsairs, etc. On top of the standard Chaos Space Marines book. That's all gone. It's all in one place. Like I said right at the start, this is a thick beast, this book now. There's lots and lots and lots within this codex. And all the legions, plus their individual flavour, are within Codex Chaos Space Marines. With a slight caveat. So you still don't get Thousand Sons and Death Guard, obviously, because they have their own standalone codexes, which we've already seen in 9th edition. But now you also don't have the Legion for World Eaters. Not a surprise, Games Workshop have announced that World Eaters are getting their own codex. That's coming separately. Corn Berserkers are still mentioned in the codex. And they say, check out Codex World Eaters. Um, so obviously it's definitely coming. But that means that World Eaters as a Legion aren't within this codex, nor are there stratagems, warlord traits, relics, etc. Again, not a surprise. But we do have a number of Legions that are in here. So we have Night Lords and Iron Warriors and um, Black Legion and Alpha Legion, etc, etc. And each of those Legions has their own Legion trait in the book, but it also has its own page of stratagems, its own page of relics, and its own page of warlord traits. So that gives you lots of individual Legion flavour, and that's all within one book, which is a nice Nice change. Good work. All in one book. This all in one book is always good work. Now that leads me in nicely to the three things I like about Codex Chaos Space Marines, and specifically the first thing that I like about Codex Chaos Space Marines, and that's flavour. I typically found that with the old 8th edition Chaos Space Marine Codex, with the exception of the additional supplements that were eventually released, in terms of the standard codex itself as a core book, there wasn't tons and tons and tons of flavour in there for you to really dial in your legion, specifically to world, uh, world specifically to word bearers or iron warriors, and to give them the real flavour and feel of that specific legion. Now, because of what we've just mentioned, because all the legions have their own stratagems and warlord traits and relics, I actually find this book is very, very good for flavour. You can definitely dial it down the range firepower route. You can dial it down the melee route. You can go psychic or prayer heavy. You can bring lots of different different aspects into the army and have a balanced force so you can really take the type of legion that you want to take and you can make them feel like the chaos legion you want them to make them feel like that's a real positive again all in one book as well so i'm, I'm really pro that that's really good um, and it's one of the things that i really love about this codex there is a ton of options there's a ton of directions you can go and that's a huge positive that leads me into point two the thing i love the most about this book and this is something i've already said twice so it's not a surprise but the fact that it's all in one book. 
that is hugely positive. Again, you do not need to have a supplement to go and find your Black Legion rules. You don't have to have a supplement to go and find your Word Bearers rules. You don't have to. I mean, it's going to probably upset people that had the supplements for Chaos Space Marines that then got re-released in Ninth Edition and shut everything down in the app until you bought that book, and now you've got to. But it's all in one book. Logically means with the amount of flavor per Legion that's in this codex, logically means we won't see supplements to give us additional rules for Black Legion, additional rules for Night Lords, additional rules for Alpha Legion. I feel like that makes this book quite safe. I feel like you can pick up this singular codex if you're not looking at running World Eaters, Thousand Sons or Death Guard and you're okay. You're pretty safe. The one thing I do not like about this, and I know this is on the things I love, so this is a bit of a... I'm not sure if I should put it in here, but I'm going to have to mention it right now because it's relevant. I don't like the fact that if you wanted to run Corn Berserkers in your Black Legion, you can do. It tells you you can do. It tells you you'd have to go and buy Codex World Eaters. If you want to run Rubric Marines in your Black Legion, you know, because they exist, you'd have to go and buy the Thousand Suns Codex. In these specific examples, you're having to buy individual codexes for access on each occasion to one unit. So you'd have to buy Codex Death Guard to get access just to Plague Marines, Codex Thousand Suns to get access just to Rubric Marines, and Codex Worldly is just to get access to Corn Berserkers. Now, considering you don't get access to the traits that exist in Thousand Suns and Death Guard, you don't get access to the stratagems, you don't get access to the Warlord traits and relics, that that's not really on that you have to buy a whole codex to get access to basically one data sheet that they could have easily printed in this book. I feel like that's a bit of a sour taste. I don't see why they needed a whole page to explain to you they don't gain a Legion trait, but they do gain Let the Galaxy Burn. They could have just put those data sheets in the codex. Bad move there. With that exception, the fact that everything else is in one book is a real positive. The third thing I love is how Legions are typically quite frightening now, and they do the things that they are supposed to do. So specifically, I look at word bearers who in the old codex were... Let's face it, they were a wet sponge. They weren't frightening anybody. And I look at them in the new codex, and I think they're actually quite frightening now. I really like them. I look at their stratagems, I look at their relics, I look at their warlord traits, and I look at their data sheets. Not their data sheets, sorry, their legion trait, and they're quite frightening. Word bearers on the charge, we wrote all hit rolls. That's quite scary. It's quite ter terrifying. So people like word bearers are a big winner here. Iron warriors, they don't just damage buildings. Huzzah! They actually do things to things like... Um, vehicles and stuff now so they're quite effective against vehicles they they're basically tougher against lower ap which is really really good um, emperor's children are quite frightening in fact all the legions are there's there's a reason to take each of the legions in the book absolutely definitely a reason to take each of the legions in the book i don't think there's a standout incredible one maybe between black legion and word bearers if i was being super picky but I can definitely see play in every legion. Real positive that there's a tough choice to make there between your legions. Does also mean that if you've been a loyal, a loyal Iron Warriors player for the last five years, people like your Warsmiths, Chris, and your Chaos Beard from Tabletop Tactics, you're actually going to be happy that your legion finally does something. Huge positive. Good work, GW. So now we move into the centre, the gooey filling of this shit sandwich. This is the bit that we go into that people typically don't love, so I squeeze it right in the middle so that we are surrounding it by positives on the whole, and that's three things I don't love. It used to be three biggest losers. This is just three things I don't love anymore because sometimes books come out and they just don't really have a loser. So in this instance, it's easier for me to say three things I don't like about the Codex. The first thing is kind of related to some previous points I've already made. But on a flip side. Now, I said right at the start of the video, let's find out if this book is doomed before it even is released. Ruined before release. The reason why I said that is because Warzone Nephilim has recently been released for competitive and matched play. And Warzone Nephilim has made a major change to the way in which you use command points in the game. You start with significantly less command points you gain less over the course of the battle, only by one, but you have to gain them in stages. And I feel like, in fact, I don't feel like, this book was almost definitely written without those command point changes in mind. There are an absolute swathe of useful warlord traits, relics, stratagems, pre-game stratagems. There's tons of stuff in this book which allows you to use your command points to do some really cool Chaos Space Marine type things. Now, if you're not playing matched play, if you're not playing the latest season of Chapter Approved, if you're not playing Warzone Nephilim, this book is amazing, and this thing I don't like isn't a problem. 
But if you are playing match play, if you are playing competitively, if you are using Warzone Nephilim, this book I find is quite command point heavy. So with the new command point changes, they've they've stung a lot of what Chaos Space Marines can do before the book has even come out. There's certain combinations I've been looking at with Warlord traits and relics and pre-game abilities where you think, oh, actually, I've spent four now before the game even gets going. And there's a load of cool stratagems that I'm going to want to use. They've got some better defensive stratagems, finally. They've got some cool offensive stratagems, and some of their cool offensive stratagems are similar to their old cool offensive stratagems. But because they were always used, they've bumped the CP cost up. So that's not particularly helpful either when you think about the changes brought in with Warzone Nephilim. So one of the things I don't like about this book is it's command point heavy. This is something that I think I could apply to any codex ever. I don't like things that require me to spend command points to do. If I'm looking at something and saying I want that ability all the time, I want to spend that command point every single turn on that stratagem, then they should really be just baked into the unit and improve the points or increase the points cost. We've said this on stream before, right? I'm not a huge fan of tons and tons and tons of stratagems and different ways. You, like, I would rather we just have these as points-based abilities. Relics should be points-based abilities now. Points-based upgrades rather than CPs, in my opinion. Anyway, maybe you think differently. Let me know in the comments below. Second thing I don't like, this is a narrative-based decision for me. Uh, again, if you disagree with me, I'd love to hear your thoughts, but I don't like mere mortals as a rule in Codex Chaos Space Marines. Mere mortals very simplistically states that you can't take more cultist units in your army than heretic astartes units this is to stop people from spamming tons and tons and tons and tons of cultists or for having five troop choices of obsec cultists and a couple of heretic astartes units and just I, and I kind of get why it exists especially from a match play or competitive play standpoint i get why it exists but from a narrative standpoint from a narrative chaos standpoint there would be more cultists than heretic astartes and it wouldn't just be two cultists for every space marine. There would be more cultists than heretic Astartes. Lots more. If you listen or read some of the literature that's out there for 40k, specifically around chaos, whether that's pox walkers and death guard, whether it's cultists and slaneshi um, worshippers, there is almost always more cultists than there ever is heretic Astartes. And this stops you from allowing allowing you to narratively field that. Again, I go back to world eaters, specifically for what not world eaters, word bearers, specifically for word bearers, I feel like they should most definitely be able to break the mere mortals rule. Word bearers should be flooding the field with cultists, with enraged lunatics that worship the chaos gods. That's what word bearers should have. And they don't, and they can't. And you must take more Heretic Astartes units than Cultist units, or at least the same. And I kind of wish narratively that was slightly different. Third thing I don't like is Back to Chaos Marks, which is funny, right? Because it's one of the biggest changes, one of the things I said I love the most. There's two reasons why I don't like Chaos Marks. The first reason is that there is no benefit or ability for choosing to make something Chaos Undivided. So you can pay 15 points for each type of God-based upgrade, but I wish there was a Chaos Undivided upgrade as well which there isn't. There's some things in the book that relate to a Chaos Undivided model, like we saw from the um, Chaos Knights Codex, but you don't get an upgrade for Chaos Undivided or a specific benefit or boon for being Chaos Undivided, and I think that's kind of a missed opportunity. People like Word... Again, Word Bearers, right? I keep going back to Word Bearers. People like Word Bearers are an undivided legion. They worship all of the Chaos Gods all the time. And now you have to pick... You don't have to, but you are you pick a specific god at the moment for a unit, but you can't pick Undivided and get an Undivided bonus. I don't know what it would look like. Would have been nice to include it. But the big thing that irks me about the Chaos Marks is the wording for the Nurgle trait. I've read it out once. I'm going to read it out one, uh, a second time. I'm going to read it to you slowly. Because I still don't know how I interpret this. And I might just be being a fucking idiot. And I might just need you to guys... I might just need you guys to get in the comments below and tell me how this actually works. Because I'm a bit lost. <clears throat> Are you ready? Each time an attack is made against this unit... If the strength characteristic of that attack either equals or is at least double the toughness characteristic of this unit, subtract one from the wound roll. So the way I read it is, and maybe I'm getting this right and I'm just being funny about this, but the way I read it is, is if my if the strength is equal to my toughness, it's minus one to wound. Okay? If the attack either equals or is at least double the toughness characteristic. So if it equals the toughness characteristic, it's minus one to wound. And if it's at least double or higher, it's minus one to wound. 
which is very very bizarre i think because it means if i'm if i'm toughness four and your weapon is strength four then you're wounding me on fives rather than fours if your weapon is strength five you're back to wounding me on threes if your weapon is then strength eight you wounded me on three <sighs> I feel like it's not worded very well. I believe what it means is you can't woo me on better than threes, but if your strength is equal to me, then you're still wounding me on fives, right? I feel like that's how it works, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly how it works. It's kind of odd. Not not a fan of it. Anything that's worded like that is it's just poor. If I'm confused already, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just because I've read it too many times and gone, eh, but... Don't like that. Don't like the wording. I think it could have been word be worded better. Consider how much insane trans humans there's out there now. Why it couldn't just say a wound roll of a one or a two fails irrespective of any weapon's abilities. I don't know. The other thing I don't like about it is because it's minus one to wound rather than a wound roll of a one or a two always fails. That means that you then got oh, I'm plus one to wound, but you're minus one to wound. But I've got I could put this strat in for plus one to wound. I this is stupid. This stuff needs to stop in all codexes. I'm AP three, but you ignore my first point of AP, but I get an extra AP because I've hit on a set. Stop this shit. Stop this shitty maths that's going on in 40k at the moment where I plus one, but then you can make yourself lightning fast, but then I can give myself another plus one to hit, but then you. Nonsense. Stop it. That's the negative stuff done. We're now on to my three favourite, or my three standout units, I should say, in the new Chaos Space Marine Codex. The first one probably won't come as a massive surprise, but it's the War Master himself. It's Abaddon, as a spoiler. He is my first standout unit. He is incredible. So Abaddon is now a 300-point monstrosity. He has all of the four Chaos Marks. He gets plus one strength from Korn when he charges or he heroically intervenes. Because he's each the first time per turn he fails a saving throw, he can change the damage characteristics to zero. Because he's Sinesh, he gets to fight first. And because he's Nurgle, he gets that stupid rule we've just spoken about. He also gains Let the Galaxy Burn. He gains Warp Strike. He has Dark Destiny, which means he has a 4-plus invulnerable save and he cannot take any more than 3 wounds per phase. Very similar to a Necron Catan, also has nine wounds, is also toughness six, Katan's toughness seven. But let's not forget he's a character with lookout, sir, so you can protect him. Okay? So he is a Katan with lookout, sir. Amazingly, amazingly decent, right? He still has his two up save. He's the War Master. If he's Battle Forged, he must be your Warlord. If he is your Warlord, he gains the Agent of Chaos keyword. Why is that important? Well, he's also a Supreme Commander, which means he can go in a Supreme Command attachment. And if he gains the Agent of Chaos keyword, he can be included in any Legion without breaking your Legion trait. So, Word Bearers can take Abaddon. Alpha Legion can take Abaddon, Iron Warriors can take Abaddon, and they do not break the Legion trait because he gains the Agent of Chaos keyword. Super important. He also uh, has the a uh, Spoiler Aura, Chaos Core units can add on to charge rolls and reroll hit rolls of one, and he has the Lord of the Traitor Legion, so if you pick a Heretic Astartes Core, not Black Legion, Heretic Astartes Core or Heretic Astartes Character Unit, you can reroll the hit roll. So he's a chapter master for all legions. If the unit you pick is Black Legion, you can also reroll the wound roll. Not forgetting, he is a Black Legion Heretic Astartes character. So he can make himself reroll all hits and wounds with Draknayen. He becomes strength 10 on the charge with 8 attacks, a minus 4, flat 3 damage, 6 is to wound, do D3 mortal wounds in a. Di he's a monster. Abaddon is a monster. Very, very, very powerful character. A good buffing chapter master anyway at 300 points. I, he's almost an auto-include. I mean, the points are probably just about right. That at 300, you're going to have to really think about whether you do include him in your list or not. But what a monster. Love it. Good work. Abaddon, standout unit. My second standout unit is going to surprise a lot of people. It's Warp Talons. I know. Warp Talons have been typically quite bad. But they're decent. So they have... Uh, toughness for two wounds now, up to two wounds. I should mention this. We've gained all of our wounds finally. So, what talent dropped to two wounds? They still have a five plus invulnerable save. They've still got the three up armor save. Let's not forget, armor of contempt is still a thing. So, they still ignore the first point of AP as well. They've got dual lightning claws, which means they can reroll wounds. So, their strength for minus two, one damage. But here's the big difference five attacks per model, except the champion who has six. Now, if you are engaged in wanton slaughter, you're getting exploding sixes at the same time. 
they're a demon unit or a demon kin unit, which means that if you're word bearers, there's a stratagem you can use which lets them reroll all hit rolls. So you can get to a point where, or even with Abaddon, you can get to a point where you're rerolling all hits, rerolling all wounds. A unit of five is 26 attacks doing that. That is pretty disgusting. Unit 10, 51 attacks, rerolling all hits, rerolling all wounds at AP minus two. Warp talents are very, very good. Their warp flame strike thing is different now. Basically, if you're in engagement range, you have to roll off to see if you can fall back. You can't just fall back out of combat. So they're very good at tying units up now, which is really, really good. Big fan of warp talents. I actually think they're going to find quite they're very fast, obviously. They can go grab objectives, etc. Um, but I like the fact that they could tie units off and stop them from falling back. You can jump into combat with a warp talent with a shooting based unit, and there is a possibility they can't fall back and then shoot. That's really nice. Now, my third standout unit was hard to decide, so I've picked two. Um, we've got a standout unit, and then we've got a bonus, and I'll talk about the bonus in just a moment. So my third standout unit is the Chaos Land Raider. Now, I was very disappointed to learn that we still can't take Crusaders, and we still can't take Redeemers and Chaos Space Marines, and we still only get the standard Land Raider with a capacity of 10 models. However, however, the Chaos Land Raider is a bit of a beast. Up to Toughness 9, with its 16 wounds and its 2-up save which is pretty tasty, has let the galaxy burn, which means it does get things like wanton destruction in the first battle round for its heavy weapons. And the big thing for me is the fact that it has twin soul shatter last cannons on either side. Not just last cannons, but soul shatter last cannons. Heavy two, strength nine, minus three, pretty standard, but they are D6 plus two damage. So Chaos Land Raiders aren't too shabby toughness nine two up save d6 plus two last cannons yeah they're quite cool and they're, they're chaos land raiders so they're also iconic i'd love to think that we might start suddenly start seeing a lot more chaos land raiders on the field of play that's my post it's just turned up it's nice of you, isn't it uh, anyway yeah chaos land raiders love them get them in your lists so i said i had a bonus standout unit and bonus standout unit is a surprise it's lord cypher lord of the fallen or the dark angels because they're just Dark Angels, right? But Lord Cypher is my fourth standout unit. Now, I didn't want to include him as a standout unit because I feel like the other three units are units you could take in everyday play. You could take them competitively. You could take them narratively. You could take them just fun games. You could take them with chill games with your friends. They're all good units you could include. And they're classic models that have just got a bit better. Lord Cypher is my standout unit for specifically matched play and no other reason than that. He's an agent of chaos. You can include him in any army and not break your legion trait. But importantly, he has a specific rule called Agent of Discord. And this is important because specifically Warzone Nephilim as well. So when I say match play, it's not just match play. It's specifically Warzone Nephilim. And the reason why he's important in Warzone Nephilim is because he, his Agent of Discord ability means if you use any abilities that gain you a command point outside of your battle-forged command point gaining any ability that gains you a command point, a psychic power, a regenerative warlord trait, anything like that, if your opponent has Cypher on the table, he can roll 1d6 every time you do that. And on a 4+, plus, you do not gain that command point. He stops it. So considering how important CP farming, CP psychic powers, and all those kind of things are going to be now with Warzone Nephilim and starting just with 6 and, and having to gain 2 a turn instead of gaining 1 a turn and starting with 12, he will shut people down from gaining those early extra command or potentially shut people down from getting those early extra command points. So you have an Eldar player who uses his psychic power, I think it's Fateful Divergence, to try and gain a CP in turn one. Siphon go four plus, nope, you can't gain that CP. And you've already spent a number of CP before the game and you've already spent a couple of stratagems, so actually you're not getting Eldritch Storm turn one. That's not happening. Super clutch, super important, very interesting rules interaction. Cypher could be a fun take in competitive lists for that very reason so before we move into the summary of codex Kel space Marines and whether i love it or hate it whether it's broken before it came out or not etc we're going to move into the final part which is my three favorite stratagems as i've already said every single legion has its own page of stratagems and there's also four pages of standard stratagems for the rest of the Kel space marines i'm not going to look at the legion specific stratagems for this particular review because i'm just trying to review codex Kel space marines as a whole so we're going to look at the generic stratagems that are available to everybody and we're going to pick my three favorite ones out of that instead because i feel like that's a more balanced way of doing it some of the Legion stratagems are insanely good and very, very powerful, and we love them. We already mentioned one from the Word Bearers, but we're going to talk about the three standard stratagems, or my three favourite stratagems, I should say, from the standard ones within Chaos Space Marine Codex. The first one is a classically named Veterans of the Long War. 
it's basically the same. It's a Heretic Astartes Inventory or Biker Unit. You use this stratagem for a single command point when it's selected to fight in the fight phase or shoot in the shoot phase. And they get plus one a wound. The very, very slight difference with it this time is it's gone up to two command points, which is a bit stingy with Warzone Nephilim on the horizon. But I kind of get it. Plus one a wound for normal vets. It was being used every turn without fail on a unit, no matter what. I certainly was using it. For two command points, I feel like it's probably fairly pointed, considering what it can do when you can apply it to Terminators in melee, when you can apply it to Havocs with ranged firepower. So I'm not against it. But Vets of the Long War, still a solid stratagem, still one of my favourite picks. My second favourite stratagem in the Chaos Space Marine Codex is one that is incredibly narrative, but also could be super clutch, and this is one of the reasons why I love it. It's called Contempt Over Caution. It's amazing. I'm just going to read it to you because it's just so chaos. It's unbelievable. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase. Select one Legion core unit from your army that is not within engagement range of any enemy units. Then select one enemy unit until the end of the phase models in that legion can target that enemy unit even if that enemy unit is in the engagement range of other friendly units provided those other friendly units are all legion units each time a model in that legion unit makes an attack against that enemy unit you cannot reroll the hit roll and an unmodified hit roll of a, of a one that attack scores a hit against one friendly legion unit of your choice within engagement range of enemy units instead resolve any attacks against friendly units after resolving any attacks that hit enemy units so if it's a bolt gun for example you just hit them with a bolt gun but if it's a last gun you'll hit them with a last gun which is quite cool if all of the legion units within engagement range of the enemy you selected are cultists it costs a single command point otherwise it costs two so no matter what you've got engaged with the enemy one unit can step forward and open fire on that enemy unit and there is a significant risk that you could hit your own models with last cannons or heavy bolters or whatever it is you're shooting at them meh so what who cares that's the chaos way it's just collateral damage who gives mm. contempt over caution is a super cool chaos stratagem which could you could see some decent use out of it as well but i love the fact that it's super narrative i also really love the fact that it's one command point if you're shooting at cultists because you just don't care about cultists as much as you care about legionnaires good work love that strat my third favourite stratagem was a hard pick. There was a couple that I could have gone into. For example, some special mentions to Infernal Engine. Infernal Engine is a CP for your demon units, unless it's Titanic and it's 2 CP. Minus 1 damage for all things coming in, uh, which is quite nice. Demon Forge is slightly different now. Instead of reroll hits and wounds, you get plus 1 to your weapon skill and ballistic skill. And because they are a new Chaos Space Marine Codex, your weapon skill and ballistic skill has gone up to 3 plus for Forge Fiends and Mauler Fiends anyway. So that would then put them to 2 pluses, which is quite nice. Um, I think it's. Pro I prefer it to rerolls. It's not as strong as rerolls, but I prefer it to rerolls because I hate rerolls. So that's quite nice. But we're going to go to demon shells as my favourite third favourite stratagem. Demon shells used to be a single model with a bolt pistol, and you could do mortal wounds. It's changed. It's still a single command point. You pick a traitorous Astartes unit from your army to shoot. So it's not core. It's not legionnaires. Um, so it's just a, a traitorous Astartes unit to shoot. They gain plus six inches to all of their bolt weapons. And each time a unit makes a range attack with a bolt weapon, they gain an additional AP1. So you take a standard unit of Chaos Space Marines with their 24-inch bolt guns, you spend 1 CP, and you turn them into Primaris Bolt Rifles. They gain 30-inch range and AP-1. That's quite nice. I quite like that for a command point. It's super cool. I mean, I feel like bolt guns should just be there anyway nowadays. But yeah, a fan of it. We like that. It's my third favourite stratagem. So there we have it. There's my 15 hot takes from Codex Chaos Space Marines. Overall, what do we think of the book? I really like it. And I, and I don't know whether I really like it because it's good or I really like it because I've had a sucky 8th edition Codex for so long now that's just basically become a meme, right? 8th edition Chaos Space Marines with one wound, etc. has become a meme. So I'm a big fan of this because I don't have one wound anymore and I've got lots of tools. There's a couple of swings and misses in this book. Um, for example, Endless Cacophony has gone, but they have a new stratagem in there which allows a unit to shoot twice in the shooting phase, but it only allows a Legionnaire unit to do that. So you've got a standard Chaos Space Marine unit, your standard bolt guns that can shoot twice in the shooting phase. Probably not going to be, I think it's 2CP, probably not going to be used because they're shooting bolt guns. Bolt guns are still wildly underwhelming in 9th edition. Bolt guns are still absolutely crap in 9th edition when you compare it to almost any other kind of base gun in the game now whether it's the standard termagant whether it's an eldar guardian bolt guns are just a bit meh so 
those sorts of things are a bit of a swing and a miss. On the whole, however, Chaos have got a lot more play. I feel like they're significantly more frightening in melee, which I'm a big fan of, because one, I'm a melee guy anyway, but secondly, I want my Chaos Space Marines up close and personal, scaring the crap out of people, ripping them limb from limb. So, positives. Huge amount of variety, loads of options in the book, lots and lots and lots of stuff to pick from, lots of ways to make your legion its individual flavour, lots of ways to customise your Chaos Space Marine army, lots more strength and power, lots more usable stratagems than before. Negatives. Stratagems, Warlord Traits and Relics are only great if you're not playing Warzone Nephilim, otherwise you're still heavily restricted, and otherwise all you've really gained is a couple of extra abilities here and there, a few extra wounds and a few extra attacks. Chaos Marks are a cool thing, but they do cost you points. Um, it's and it's a tough what's good about chaos marks is it's a tough toss-up office often which ones you want for for warp talents for example do you want corn to get plus one strength on the charge your strength five re-rolling all wounds or do you want sonesh to make sure you always fight first that's a tough call as well right so that's a good thing because it gives you options um, and that's a positive but there is a ton of options a lot of which require cp and cp is a premium as we now know from warzone nephilim I don't feel like this book is even remotely close to as powerful as Harlequins or Tau or Tyranids, and honestly, I think that's probably a good thing for the game in the whole. I certainly can't see them coming and walking tournaments and being seven of the top ten lists, which is also a positive. Um, but there is a bit of a question over this codex because of some of the reactive changes that are coming out in bat data, uh, data slate updates, balanced data slates, Warzone books, some of this book feels a little bit irrelevant before it's even released. So Armour of Contempt, how that coincides with certain traits. For example, if you're Iron Warriors, Iron Warriors, their Legion trait states that if it's AP-1 or AP-2 targeting your Iron Warriors, you worsen the AP of that by 1. Does that stack with Armour of Contempt? If you hit me with an AP-3 last cannon, and I am AP-1 because of Armour of Contempt, that makes it AP-2. Does my Iron Warriors benefit then kick in and make it AP-1? Can I make a last cannon AP-1 from being an Iron Warrior? We don't know. That's going to need a day one FAQ, I feel, to be clear. Now, I would suggest that it does kind of stack, but a lot of this is to do with this insane amount of maths you have to do where you add one to wound or minus one to wound or add one to hit them. I don't like that. The game in 9th edition was supposed to be quicker and cleaner. Things like that make it more messy. Like I said, tons of stratagems, tons of relics, tons of warlord traits, loads of cool options. Great for narrative players. Definitely a win for narrative players. Well, bigger win for players as well if you move the fucking crusade rules to the back of the book finally rather than having them plonked in the middle of the codex, which is always annoying. Please change that game's workshop. However... It's also laid out quite poorly. You go to each legion. I This is an opinion, and I'm happy for you to tell me if you think I'm wrong. You go to each legion. You get legion trait, warlord traits, relics, and stratagems. You do that for all of the legions. Then you go into standard warlord traits, relics, and stratagems. I don't know if I prefer it that way around or if I would prefer all of the stratagems in one place. Not sure. I don't know about that one. As a chaos player, I'm excited to play with this codex. I'm being positive. What I will say about the book in general is it's a very thick book for Chaos Space Marines for a change. The artwork inside this codex is absolutely stunning and beautiful. The book is a very nice book on the whole. There's some cheeky little upgrades. Possessed are, are suddenly frightening again. Warp talents are decent, as we've said. We've got the new Cultist HQ choices. We've got, we've got new model ranges coming out. Also benefit. I just don't love it as much as I thought I would. If I had to grade this book out of 10, I'm probably sitting between a 6 and a 7 right now. I'm sat here. I'll tell you how 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 borderline underwhelmed I am is I have Eldar on my desk that I'm building right now. And once I've reviewed this codex, I'm going to go back to building my Eldar. Not blown away by it. It's okay. It's not incredible. It's a good book. It doesn't break the game, and I think that's an important differentiation. And maybe that's why I feel underwhelmed. Maybe because of Tyranids, because of Tau, because of Harlequins, that's why this feels underwhelmed, which might actually underwhelming, which might actually mean that this is a great job. Might mean this is a great job. Anyway, obviously this book was provided 
by, to me by Games Workshop. So a massive, massive thank you to Games Workshop for giving me this book to review. They sent it through for me for free to review it for them. Um, and I do think it's a good book on the whole in terms of the the options, in terms of the narrative, in terms of what you can do. Competitively, I'm just struggling with it a little bit, which maybe not be a bad thing. Like I say, that might be a great job. Well done, Games Workshop. Thank you for sending it through. Hope you guys have enjoyed this review. At the point in which this review goes live, this book is now up for pre-order at either all of your local gaming stores if they get access to pre-order books or on the Games Workshop website. Once you finally get your hands on this book in a week's time or whenever you watch this video, if you've already got your hands on this book, let me know what you think about it. Were you underwhelmed or do you think this was a perfect job well done by Games Workshop? I'm struggling at the moment. I can't decide. I'd love to know what you think. I'd love to know if you're looking forward to grabbing hold of this book and uh, putting the galaxy to the flame or whether you're kind of going, what I've seen, not that bothered. Hmm, interesting. Let me know what you think. Anyway, like I said, best way to support the channel, become a member. Come and become a member of the channel. Join us in the Great Hall. Jump in Discord. You can tell me in Discord what you think about this codex as well. I'm interested to see what people do with it. I'm often very wrong about how strong a codex is or isn't. I'm just giving you what I think and what I feel. I'd love to hear what you guys think and feel about this codex. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, like I said, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Come back for more content in the future. We put tons of content out on YouTube. We love you all. I appreciate you all being here. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.